Sponsored by Delete Me. The first laptop computer hit the market over 40 years ago, and ever since then, we've been shackled to the slow evolution of the same core conceit. Screen up top, keyboard down low, hinge in between. It's Yahoo. Well, it only took one encounter with a flexible display to convince me that the future of computing would be foldable. The Lenovo X1 Fold and Asus ZenBook Fold pioneered the notion of a laptop that could become a portable desktop. And today, HP is flexing its own multimodal PC that's sleeker and more mature than anything that's come before, at a price that sadly guarantees you'll never see one out in public. Speaking of being out in public, even as somebody accustomed to carrying around unreleased or otherwise precious gadgets, I was extremely conscious of the $5,000 payload dangling from my clenched fist as I walked from the HP briefing to the ferry back to Brooklyn. If the Spectre Fold were the first laptop with a flexible display, maybe its $5,000 price tag would at least be understandable. It would still be utterly unjustifiable for reasons I'll get into, but it's not hard to see how a machine like this can captivate. When I share photos of it on social, perched in different postures for different settings, there's always someone who says it looks like something out of sci-fi. And it does. That's the magic of a PC with a flexible screen. It can start out no bigger than a 12 and a half inch clamshell, open up into an absolutely monster 17 inch mobile workstation, or split the difference with a one and a half screen workspace concept that adds more display area by bumping down the keyboard, which also gives you a clever little wrist rest. The magnets hold it firmly in either orientation, while also informing the OLED screen which sectors it can shut down. Very smart. It's the extra time spent on the small stuff that elevates the Spectre Fold above the competition. Namely, a Lenovo that squandered its promise with a bug-plagued performance right out of the box, and an Asus whose ponderous size largely nullified its design ambitions. Lenovo later found something truly great in its dual-screen YogaBook 9i, but that's a machine you need to assemble with a detached keyboard that adds a measure of bulk to the equation. The HP, by contrast, folds into its own footprint with the keyboard sandwiched neatly between, and it borrows Lenovo's trick of wirelessly charging it while it is so docked. And despite the need to be thin enough to fit in the gap between the screen sides, these keys actually boast a fair amount of travel while the Bluetooth connection is strong enough to keep the double letter bug to a minimum. Even the trackpad is passable. I forgot my travel mouse on more than one occasion, and I could still get work done without feeling too confined. The only complaint I have is a familiar one from other notebooks with detached boards. There's no backlight, and that's no good. There are always more trade-offs to a foldable than to a conventional device, but HP did a nice job of keeping many of those to a minimum. To make up for having just two USB ports, there's a dock in the box to pad them out with a broader range of options. The speakers pack huge sound, despite the bezels being slimmer than on other foldables, and the moving parts feel quite sturdy. The company gave us a look inside the machine during our briefing and took the opportunity to point out that the frame extends all the way up to the hinge gutter. Also, the battery is smartly split, not just across the PC's two halves, but asymmetrically so, with the heavier half down on the bottom side to help anchor it when you're laptopping. There's a physical privacy shutter on the webcam, bravo, as well as security features like walk-away auto-lock, unlock on approach, and lurker detection. I despise lurkers. And rounding up the included perks, there's an active stylus in the box that magnetically docks and wirelessly charges. One sacrifice I expected to see, I actually didn't, battery life. Over about a month of testing, the Spectre Fold routinely cranked out seven to eight hours of endurance, even when I spent the majority of a day in full-on 17-inch workstation mode, with the whole display illuminated. Granted, it doesn't get as bright as I'd like, which probably helps, but that's still excellent endurance for a machine this flexible. But even in a hypothetical world where this cost half as much as it actually does, yeah, the HP Spectre Fold was never going to be Mr. Mobile's mobile workstation. How software squanders this hardware's promise after this. 
It's been a little over six months since I first told you about Delete Me, the simple service that gives control of your personal data back to you. In that half a year, Delete Me has reviewed over 4,000 listings from data brokers across the web for me, and it's removed my personal information from almost 80 of them. What kind of listings? Well, we're talking private information, like my physical address history, my property and court records, even the names of my family members, now scrubbed from nearly 80 data brokers archives without me having to do any work on my own. That means Delete Me has saved me almost a full day searching and removing my personal information from the internet. And because data brokers are relentless, Delete Me is too. They'll repeat the process every three months as long as you're subscribed. Delete your personal data from the web. Visit joindeleteme.com slash Mr. Mobile and use code Mr. Mobile for 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. It's never been easy to make software for foldables. Witness the long road Android has had to travel to make its pseudo-tablet experience even passable. But the difference is, in that world, manufacturers seem more empowered to make the changes that Google, at the platform level, can't or won't. Not so much, it seems, in the world of Microsoft. I've learned through hard experience that Windows will always find a way to complicate, if not totally ruin, a foldable. In an effort to justify the price of this thing, HP painted a half-hearted picture of jet-setting executives for whom money is no object and mobile flexibility is the name of the game. Rich guys. Well, it's hard to imagine such a person finding this acceptable. And then there's the 1.5 screen mode. In theory, this could be nearly as useful as the Asus Zenbooks I enjoy so much. But in practice, there are very few ways to make meaningful use of this space, because Windows doesn't really know how to. To its credit, HP makes an effort to build on Windows Snap, but unfortunately the effectiveness varies depending on how each program is coded. So in 1.5 mode, I, I end up more impressed by the palm rests than the second screen here. And the hardware has inevitable compromises too. In tabletop workstation mode, the webcam isn't just off to the side, it's rotated to portrait because of the sensor orientation. So you effectively need to take your video calls with a smaller screen, and that's unfortunate. Also, the kickstand's offset position means it needs to stretch further back to hold up the machine in a stable position, which means it leans back just a bit too much. Finally, each time I try a folding computer, I'm amazed all over again that a company with the ambition to build a revolutionary device like this doesn't have the will to refuse the licensing agreements that mandate these ugly stickers and basically make it look like any other PC when it's closed. And I'm gobsmacked that a $5,000 machine comes preloaded with the scareware that even grandparents shouldn't be falling for anymore. Can you peel off the stickers? Yeah. Can you uninstall that shovelware? Sure. But you shouldn't have to, and you shouldn't have to. To round out the complaints with the obligatory spec shaming, yeah, that's a 12th generation Core i7 in there from February 2022. When I asked HP why it didn't go with a newer processor, the company said it's simple. The design of the Spectre Fold called for a 9-watt CPU, and there is no 9-watt CPU in Intel's 13th generation. That, plus the lack of a dedicated GPU, means you won't be using all this screen area for intense gaming or video editing. It just can't hang. Just like every foldable PC. HP's CEO kicked off the company's Imagine event by saying two things that really stuck with me. First, that we've entered an era of flexibility, where people can work from anywhere, and our machines should reflect and enable that. And second, that HP is having fun again. Well, the Spectre Fold embodies both of those statements, and even though it's priced beyond the ability of any sane, sober person to justify, it's at least exciting as a herald of things to come. But until HP or some other manufacturer truly dives in with both feet with a great combination of design, power, and pricing, well, we're never gonna see that future properly realized.
This review was made possible by a Spectrefold review sample provided by HP. But as always, I gave the manufacturer no copy approval rights, which means they didn't get to see this review ahead of time, nor did HP provide compensation or have any editorial input whatsoever. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you'd like to see more videos like this. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.